Hello everyone, my name is Alex here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to use the Uniform Circle Asset Spawner that I have created. But there are a couple little um, things you need to kind of do just to make sure that your project is set up to use it. Now, a lot of it is kind of optional, but some of it is a little bit important if you want to use some of the uh, example assets that I threw in there. So, there are a couple of assets in the project that utilize Niagara. And so as a result, if you want to actually be able to test out the spawner with those assets first, you need to make sure that you go to your settings, to your plugins, and you're gonna go scroll all the way down here to where it says FX. You'll see uh, Niagara here, and you'll just wanna go ahead and enable it. As you can see, I already have it enabled. It is not enabled by default, so make sure you do come here and turn this on. And then it'll tell you to restart your Epic game, or not your Epic game, your Unreal project. And then just do that and then the project should open back up. And then once you have your project all set up for that, you'll want to um, go to wherever you downloaded the Uniform Circle Asset Spawner. As you can see, there's two files in there, the Circle Spawner and the README. And you'll just want to go ahead and extract that into your content folder of your project. So the project I have here is Demo Import. And we're just going to make sure that the files are um, extracted to the content folder here. And so we we'll just select that, kind of let it do its thing. And now if we open back up the project, you should see the folder there. And then to use the Uniform Circle Spawner, it's gonna be under here, under Actors. And look, there it is. Now something of note is that you can use this without needing to use the Niagara plugin. But again, if you want to use the example content, it's not going to work out without Niagara. And a lot of that you'll find is inside some of these files here, mostly under, underneath most of these particles. You might see like some weird missing folders and references if you don't have Niagara used. But um, if that's the case and you just want this uniform circle spawner, all you have to do is just make sure you can just remove those assets. And then make sure that on the default settings that these two settings here, the parent actor and the default spawn asset are um, set to something else because these are referencing Niagara components here. But yeah, other than that, um, we'll go ahead and get started with the rest of the tutorial. Hello everyone, my name is Alex Cortez, and today I'm going to be showing you a tutorial on this new asset that I have created called the Uniform Circle Spawner. And basically what this asset does is it allows you to spawn assets uniformly in a circle. And the main use I use for this is mostly particle effects. So if you go, it'll go ahead and start from the greenest point that we have on the circle, which is represented here, that is considered the first item. And it spawns it all the way up until it hits the red uh, spot, which represents the last item to be spawned. And the main reason I basically created an asset like this is because if you've ever worked with particles in Niagara or in Cascade, um, Unreal doesn't really have a default option for trying to spawn items in like a uniform circle. Like what you can do is create a cylinder, shrink it all the way down to the shape of a circle and then try to spawn on the outer edge. But the problem is like you can't get a uniform spawn from it. So in other words, you might have a bunch of particles spawning on this side and maybe like one on this side and that's often not desired. So I basically created this little tool to kind of remedy that situation. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over what kind of features this tool has. So as you can see here on the right side, we have a quantity and that basically just represents the number of points around. You can scale it up to, I think as much as like 300 or scale it down to like two, one, seven, zero, who cares? Any sort of number will work. And it goes ahead and kind of spawns them evenly. So these are the equal distance um, around the circle or between each point, I mean. Uh, you have the radius here, should be pretty self-explanatory, just tells it from the center how far away to spawn. Uh, we have delay between spawns here, so this is basically how much in seconds to wait before spawning the next actor. So the longer I, uh, the bigger the number we have, the more it waits before it decides to spawn the next one. And then we have shuffle spawn order. So maybe you don't care about what order these particles will spawn in. In this sort of example, it kind of fits perfectly. Like maybe you just want them to kind of be spawning all the way around and then, you know, do their thing. So that's always an option. You'll notice that the color changes blue on these dots to represent that you have the shuffle spawn order on. 
Custom spawn properties we'll get back to in a little bit. Play on awake just, just make, lets you know that upon the object being spawned, it will go ahead and activate spawning the rest of those assets. Otherwise, you have there is a function that you can call to go ahead and spawn them. I'll just go ahead and keep that on for now. Now, this is where things get a little bit interesting. So we have here the parent actor. So what's the neat thing about this sort of particle system is it not only just spawns a particle, it actually also spawns, can spawn a parent actor. And what you can actually do is you can actually attach that particle to the parent actor and that parent actor can have its own individual functionality separate from the particle system. So what this basically means is that in my example, I have a homing missile actor. And basically what I'm doing is I'm spawning this magic missile particle, which is what this, this default spawn asset is, and I'm attaching it to this homing missile actor, so that way upon being spawned, the homing missile actor would then do its functionality and actually, in this case, home in on its uh, targets over here. So the only reason this thing is ever able to follow around is because it's, this particle is actually parented to it. And the main reason I set it up like that is because um, by default, if you try to destroy a particle actor before um, its uh, trail finishes, then the trail will just instantly disappear, and that kind of looks ugly, which is why I have the particle spawning on a separate actor. And now you'll look over here, and this is basically the array of different uh, spawn points, and inside each of these little spawn points, they have their own individual properties. So the spawn point here, uh, zero, that basically is just telling it where around the circle to spawn. So zero is going to be the green here, three is going to be this one here, and so on and so forth. The spawn offset is pretty interesting. So if we go ahead here and we go to have custom properties on, we can actually just go ahead and start modifying the spawn offset of the particle. So if we go ahead and we, we can stretch this bad boy all the way over here, and if we hit play, you'll notice that it spawns here. So that could be pretty cool if you want to create like some interesting shapes, like maybe get stretch these outwards to create more of a teardrop shape. That can be fun. And set that back to zero. And then if you also have custom properties on, you can actually have assets spawn um, differently each time. So currently, it's spawning the magic missile particle mainly because that's just the default asset. If I, I can go ahead and actually have it spawn a cable actor instead. So if I go ahead and hit play, you'll notice that the very first uh, asset is actually a cable actor. Oh. And you can see here, this is what I was talking about, where it attaches to a homing missile. I have this individual cable actor attached to the homing missile, so it still like flew around and tried to hit the target. So that's also something that's pretty neat, is that you can actually have different looking assets carry like similar functionality if you really wanted to. Also, if you really actually do not want the homing missile aspect of it, like let's just assume you want just the particles to spawn by themselves, um, you can actually, let me quickly fix this. Cool. You can actually go ahead and set this to none. And now what will happen instead is it'll just spawn the particle, but it won't be attached to any other additional actor. So it just kind of goes ahead and plays on its own. Cool stuff. Some other nice little sort of tidbits is obviously you can rotate this however you want. So if you want it to be kind of horizontal and flat, it'll spawn in there. But what I think this is a pretty cool one in my opinion, if I do say so myself, is that you can actually tell it which parts along the circle to spawn and which parts not to spawn. So we go ahead and we turn this back on, the kind of custom spawn properties. You can kind of scroll down here and let's just assume we don't want uh, spawn point four to spawn. So let's see, we start from green, it's probably, I think it's this one. We go ahead and we and put a negative one here it actually gets rid of that spawn point. So now if we hit play, it's going to circle around, completely skip this point here, and then spawn the rest. So this is pretty cool if you want to go ahead and maybe have like little gaps to create interesting patterns once again. I'm going to just do get rid of that. If you ever want these sort of um, these uh, properties to ever be reset, all you have to do is just turn off half custom spawn properties and it goes back to default. Uh, something else you can do, by the way, is you can actually go ahead and have them spawn in different orders. So the way this works is that each of these values is obviously assigned to the spawn point here. And so if you have custom spawn properties on, 
what we can do is we can actually assign these spawn points different values and get, cause these to spawn in a different order. So for example here, uh, we have spawn point 0 here, that's where the green is. If we go 1, 2, 3, this will be spawn point 3. Let's, if we can actually make it, so spawn point 3 here spawns first, and then spawn point 0 spawns later, and they basically can swap spots. So to do that, all you have to do is just swap these points around. So spawn point 0 is now spawn point 3, and then spawn point 3 is now spawn point 0. And now you might notice that sometimes the editor, the coloration can be a bit off, but if you just keep like a good kind of mental note of how the, of where the, of where the points are, and you there shouldn't be too much confusion. So now if we hit play, you'll notice that this one spawned first and went from 0, 1, 2, 3, and then 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way back around. Cool stuff. I'm going to go ahead and disable that. And now you may be wondering how does this necessarily work when I'm trying to spot it. Well, over here, I have this little actor that already has built in just a simple graph that tells it to spawn the uniform circle spawner alongside it. And I have it working so that on play, uh, if I hit spacebar, it'll go ahead and spawn the asset. As you can see here, it went ahead and spawned the uniform circle aspect. And since they um, are play on awake, they just went ahead and went off. Look at him go. Uh, something you might notice though is that this uniform circle asset is much different than this one. And that's because this one is using the default values, while this one is using the values that we modified in editor. Now this can be kind of an issue because if, if you're trying to spawn it, you're not going to be able to really modify it at runtime unless you do some insanely complicated uh, scripting for it. But thankfully there's a simple solution around it. Basically all you want to do is that just take the uniform circle spawner and create a child blueprint class. So once you have the uniform circle spawner child, all you have to do is just kind of drag it out here, and make whatever changes you want. Let's make this uh, fit 38. Let's make it actually, let's make it like really small and tiny. Let's put 0.2 delay. And then we can probably just give it a shuffle spawn order, sure. Once you create that instance, you can actually go ahead to go to Edit Blueprint, and we can apply instant changes to the blueprint. And now, what that will do is that will save whatever changes we have here to this uniform spawner child. So now if we go back to this blueprint, all we'd have to do is to simply tell it to spawn the uniform spawner child instead. And let's go ahead and get rid of this one. Oh, actually, this is a good time to talk about this. All right, so you may have noticed that when I deleted this circle asset here, the lines did not um, disappear with it, and that's because of the way that construction script is done. It doesn't clear the lines after deleting it. Uh, that's why this little button here exists. What you have to do is just simply click this button, hover over it, and it'll disappear, and then you can delete it, and then you won't be bothered by the lines anymore. Anyway, so back to this. If we go ahead and hit play now, now that we have this um, set to spawn the circle child uh, spawner, if we hit start, you'll notice it spawned the particles. Yeah, it kind of doesn't work well with this cube, but you kind of get the deal. You basically, if you, run into, um, if you want to make changes to the circle spawner and have it spawn like a unique instance, you just got to make sure that you create a child first, make some adjustments in the editor, and then just apply it. All right, now there's at least one more small detail I need to mention before we wrap this up. Something small is just uh, if you want all the particles to ever spawn at one point, going back to delay between spawns here, you just have to hit zero. And then all the particles will spawn at once. And there you go. All right. And that's about the last uh, bit of instructions I can think of right now to for the circle uniform circle spawner. Um, feel free to download it and play with it. Go ahead and show me any sort of cool creations you have. If you have any sort of uh, problems and issues, be sure to report it or like leave it in a comment underneath the asset store. And I will go ahead and try to get, make any sort of fixes. Uh, any sort of feature requests that you may want, uh, feel free to also leave those in the comments. And I will also try to go ahead and add them if possible. 
Uh, otherwise, um, just make sure that you download it before, but before you do that, make sure you have already Niagara installed and then you should just have a fun time with it.